we're going to train a neural network to classify incoming sounds, in this case an oboe and a trombone. And the neural network we'll be using in this case is a MLP classifier, that's a multi-layer perceptron. Uh, and if you want to know more about the inner workings of that, you can go to the learn.flucoma.org page. And these four articles are very useful at understanding the inner workings. But for now, we're just going to go into how to use it. So first, we're going to want to get our incoming audio signal into some kind of more useful form. So for that, we're going to use the fluid.mfcc object. That's MEL frequency kepstrel coefficients. And it simply describes the timbral makeup of the of an audio signal. We're going to ask for 13 coefficients and we're going to tell it to ignore coefficient zero because that just tells us the gain of the incoming signal and that tells us nothing about the timbral makeup. So we're going to want to create a array of size 13, call it timbre buffer, and that will be where we store the MFCC data. We go to properties, we're going to set the Y range from 50 to minus 50, just to make it more, just so we can see the entire spectrum of data. And then we're going to send this to that buffer. Now, if I play this audio, you'll see we have the trombone and the oboe. Now, we want to create a training set of data that we will train this neural network on. For that, we're going to need a fluid.dataset object, and we'll call it timbre data. And also, a fluid.label set object, and we'll call it instruments. We'll need a counter. And we'll also need some symbols. Now into the data set, we'll feed the current, we'll send a message and we'll feed the current counter number and also the contents of the timbre buffer. And into the label set, we'll send a message, add label, and we'll feed in the current counter number again. And also the symbol, either trombone or oboe. And what this counter number will do is be the identifier that links the current the symbol to the timbre buffer data. So now we're ready to make our training set. What we're going to do is select one of these two. So we'll start with trombone. And we'll want to play the trombone audio and then click to add several points while the trombone is playing. And you'll want to avoid clicking during the silences, because we don't want the neural network to think that silences are what a trombone or an oboe sounds like. We'll stop there. We'll leave some data at the end for a testing set. And now we'll do the same with the oboe.
And the reason why we leave some data at the end is because we want to make sure that the classifier can predict and classify what the instrument it's hearing is on data that it hasn't been trained on. So now to check this data, we can send a print message to both the label set and the data set. And in the console, we can see 95 rows in both sets, and we can see all the data that we sent in. Now in the classifier to actually train, we want to send a the fit message with the name of our data set and our label set. And for now on the output, we'll just place a list object. And this will be where we are told our error. So if we click fit, we can see the current error is 0.13, which is already quite low, but we'll want to get that lower. And this is a representation of how well trained the network is. Effectively, the closer this is to zero, the better outcomes you'll get. And the way this works is the top of the data is processed through the neural network into our labels from the label set. And afterwards, these results are compared with the label set. And based on how accurate it was, it tweaks the neural network. So to lower the error, we can just train it more. And you see it has decreased. Now that it's trained, we can move these a little bit. We can send it a different message, predict point, and then give it the name of our buffer. And what this will do is every time this message receives a bang, it will take the data out of Tumbra buffer and try and predict whether that data would represent a trombone or an oboe. So here on the output, we'll actually want to route, add a route object, and filter out the two different kinds of messages. And this one will be our class prediction. And on the input, we'll add a metro and a toggle. Now, if we turn this on, oh, forgot to connect this up. If we turn that on, we see it's currently predicting a trombone. Now, there's nothing playing, and yet it's telling us, oh, it's a trombone. This is because we haven't trained it on silence. We haven't given it any indication what silence sounds like. Uh, all it knows are oboes and trombones. And so it picks whichever label it does know that has the closest data representation in its model to the data that it's getting. But as soon as we start playing one of these audio files, you'll see it starts predicting correctly. And you'll see, again, during the sound parts, it doesn't quite know what to do, but that's fine. We haven't told it to listen out for silence, so we're not expecting it to get those parts right. But during the oboe notes, it is correctly predicting it. And we'll see if it gets the test data correct as well, that we didn't feed into the training data. Okay, and it got it all right. Now we'll try the trombone.
looks like you got everything right. So now we could add another symbol for silence and do some more training based on that. We might find we need to clear, send a clear message to the classifier before we do that. Or we could also just add a fluid.loudness object, which gives us the loudness and true peak of an incoming audio signal. And because we don't we only want the loudness, we'll ask for just that. And we'll see if it's over minus 30 decibels. And then we'll multiply that with our toggle. And we'll use that to turn the metro on. And then we'll invert that signal. So now if a one comes out, here we'll get a zero. And we'll add a toggle. And this will be our silence toggle output. So now, if it's currently silent, and now if we play an oboe, we need to click that again. Now if we play an oboe, we see it knows when it's silent and when it's not. And now when it is silent, it turns off the predictions, so we no longer get that big flicker. We still get it sometimes, it's not perfect, but you know, we can keep tweaking it until we get it right. That is how to train a MLP classifier.